Insecure scored eight Emmy nominations this year and finally ascended to the lofty Best Comedy Series category for the very first time. I'm Rob Lucuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby. I'm here with Emmy-nominated showrunner Prentice Penny. Prentice, first of all, congratulations on your Emmy nomination. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're super excited and stunned. I've learned never to get too ahead of the horse a little bit, so it was a, uh, uh, it was a happy morning for sure. Like, so, I mean, it was, it probably was a bit of a surprise for you, right? When you saw that best comedy series, like, what, what were your thoughts? It's funny, like, I, I go on, <laughs> I was, I'm not usually like this, but because of the stuff that, that the show was generating this season, I would go on to Gold Derby, like, once a week and kind of see where we were in the rankings and, and watching people and being like, oh, why are they not talking about us? But then also being like, it's no big deal. Um, and then vacillating everything in between. So at a certain point, I just stopped because I was like, I can't, this is not help, help, healthy. Um, but I was just super stunned and excited. Like I believed Issa would. Um, and so obviously I, I, would, I was happy to even be mentioned and then to have the series be up there for sure, especially as a creative color, I mean, you're just wanting your art to matter like everybody else and to see the humanity in our work um, and hard work that we do too, you know, and to have a show be nominated that I, at least for me, that's about black people that isn't about our trauma. You yeah. know, I think sometimes there's things about black trauma that people really seem to gravitate to. And this show is really about our beauty, not our burden. And so to have that be seen and that be wanting to be awarded um, was to me saying something. Yeah, and we got to see Yvonne nominated and Ava and yes. Kira and Nina. And, so, and I mean, just across the board. And it goes to show, I think season four, for whatever reason, really, you guys really hit your stride. And uh, most people are saying, I sound like Donald Trump, but most people are saying that uh, um, season four, there's something special about it. I have my theories. Why do you think it was so well received? Um, I think it was well received for a few reasons. I, I think that, the show kind of, obviously the love story in our show is, has always been um, East and Molly. And so I think we needed the currency and the credit in the bank to attack a storyline like this. Um, and I think because it hit at our two main people that usually we're both pulling for um, concurrently to have that be at odds and examine friendships that are reason, season or a lifetime um, that we wanted to explore in those relationships. So I feel like the perfect weird storm of a pandemic and people being at home. Um, I think people wanting to see something, I think during this time of a lot of civil unrest of wanting to see black people, you know, and people of color like loving each other and seeing the humanity in that. Um, and, I, and again, I hope that it's like, you never want that to be the reason why of anything, but I think the storm of all these things kind of, um, like galvanizing right now. And I think in terms of, you know, creatively, the, you know, a lot of our staff is the same writing staff from the beginning, um, similar directors. We've been with the same DP, like Ava Burkowski, obviously, who's nominated since season two. And so I think all of us being comfortable, Issa's going off to do other projects, I've gone off to do other projects, and bringing the things we've learned back to, I, I, I think, to elevate the stories, uh, not just narrative-wise, but how we tell them. I think all kind of came together in a really interesting way to all sort of find our strides. Y Yvonne, obviously, you know, getting just enormously, you know, watching her grow over the last four seasons as a performer. Um, she obviously has a, a comedy background, but to watch her grow as a dramatic actress, I think along the way kind of built to that. So um, I think all those things just kind of hit in like the right moments. Yeah, it was like light lightning in a bottle. Um, my theory is that as an outsider, you know, I watch Insecure so that I can maybe get an insight into this particular person's story. Um, and she's from a different background and she has friends that are di different to me. Um, and I love being immersed in the beautiful music that your music supervisor chooses. And But then to have this breakup between two friends, man, that is so relatable. We've all been there and it's heartbreaking, isn't it? Yeah. Like, and you guys were nervous about this, weren't you? Yeah, we were very nervous. I mean, I remember when Issa and I were sort of, we sort of uh, both pitched ideas that, that were similar. Issa said, oh, I would love to start the season kind of with like the way like 90s movies would be like, you know, you're in the present. You're like, how did I get here? And kind of backing up into that. 
And then I sort of said a similar thought, which was like, what if Issa says, I don't mess with Molly anymore? Like, where would that go? How did that happen? And so we loved, we sort of melded those two ideas together. But it was very scary because they're the, they're the backbone and spine of our show. I mean, that's the love story in the series. And so to be able to like start to pull at that, um, it was it was scary of like, what is this gonna mean? Because we never want them to be like frenemies. You know, we always want them to be like real friends. But like real friends, they've been together a long time. They've been they met when they were 18 um, and they're 30 now. And so it's like a lot of things when you know where everybody's bodies are buried and you kind of can't let, you're kind of entering a new yeah. phase of your life. Yeah. Um, and it's like, you, you can you see this person as a fully growing adult or are you holding them to who they were? Because uh, we're people, we change. And that's like any marriage, I kind of view them as a married couple. And like any married couple, you hope to grow together. Um, and we know what happens when you don't. And so we always wanted to be like, hey, this is a moment where Issa and Molly have to decide, are they growing together in the next phase of their journey? And we wanted to ask that of all the characters, Issa and Lawrence, like Lawrence and Condola, yeah. Molly and Andrew, you know, Issa and Nathan. Like we wanted to ask that of all of our characters, like sort of are they growing together or apart? And that was a central theme. And obviously Issa and Molly being the most pivotal. Yeah, you're right. It was a current throughout the whole season with a lot of the characters. And what I really appreciated, because I know that I've done this with friends where I haven't forgiven certain things because I expect a certain way of uh, interaction and people yeah. grow. By the end of the season, the episode that you um, wrote and directed, Loki Lost, um, Issa and Molly are back in Mikado, finally having some real talk and then you and Ava pull the camera out of the restaurant into the street and we see life going on as per normal. That's a great way to end the season. What was behind doing it that way? I think the intention uh, when we came up with the idea was that, you know, we kind of knew what they needed to talk about. From a writer's perspective, we were like, there's no amount of real estate that they'll say, I'm sorry for this, I'm sorry for this. And like, we kind of had seen the infractions all season. You could kind of guess kind of what would be in the, form of that conversation. So for us, it was about the most important part of that scene was seeing them just be able to be like, literally coming back to the table where the show started from. Um, and that's really what mattered. And so um, Ava and I just talked about like, what are the, what's the most interesting version of this to see? And to know that, that even in the space of their giant breakup, life continues to move. And so that was an important element to sort of tie together that yes, you know, in our minds, the insecure world is the only world that kind of matters. But in life, everybody's having these moments. And so we kind of wanted to show that at the end of the day, yes, this is sort of one, um, these are sort of two characters moments, but every character that's crossing paths right now in that last shot is having a moment like that and they are no more special. So that was sort of the framing, the ideas that the world is going to continue to move, but they need to sort of stop. Um, and that was sort of the intention behind the shot. There's another really great um, sequence where, and, and Yvonne actually, Yvonne Oji, she explained that when she and Andrew are having that really difficult conversation, you decided to let the camera keep rolling. And she said that she felt so exposed and so vulnerable that she was, you were able to help her bring something out of her that she didn't really even know was there, which I think is really inspiring as a director and showrunner to be able to do that with your cast. I mean, do you live the moments like that? I think I had learned, I had, in, in between season three and four, I went off to go direct a, a movie um, on court. And I learned so much um, working with other actors because primarily the last, you know, three seasons I'd been with these people and, and I, but I was growing as a director and wanting to try different things. And so um, I'd worked with Courtney B. Vance and E.C. Nash in the movie and other young talented actors along the way. And I just tried different, I was much more experimental in my movie than I ever would have been on Insecure. And I just learned to just like, try things that felt more cinematic and give your act, push your actors in ways that made them uncomfortable or, or let them find something. And so I had worked with Yvonne for a very long time, obviously on the show. And I had just learned things and, and would try things. And I think, you know, when you're making a television show, I have way more resources doing Insecure than, than I did to make my movie. I have much more time to play than I did when you make a movie. You know, you're there in a, a location, you got, you know, three hours and you got to move on. So for this, I, I didn't, wasn't worried about that. But I knew, I knew Yvonne as an actress. And so I wanted her, this was a real moment. I didn't want a moment that felt like I'm watching an actor get emotional. 
I wanted Yvonne to get emotional yeah. personally. And so I remember saying, I am willing to let this camera roll as long as possible for her to sit in this moment. And so initially I kind of had a riff on like, basically start begging him, start ad libbing whatever you want. And so she did that. So that's what she thought her task was. And I just let the cameras roll and I watched for like the first minute of confusion. Yeah. <laughs> the actress being like, why is he not cutting? Uh, and then I sort of watched a, the, the second moment of, a second minute of, uh, I better come up with something. And then I watched, it happened and I literally almost watched Molly go away. I literally watched Yvonne forget the scene. I could just see it in her eyes and her face. Her whole thing changed. And around minute four, I literally, we were all at Video Village, like getting riveted, watching this. We all felt it. We all, like all of like the writers, the EPs, we all watched it happen. And then like around minute five, I really just, she was just sat in the, cause the, the, the set was dead quiet. I mean, we're rolling. And she was just looking at, at um, Alexander, who's obviously an amazing actor and it just hit. And I, I cried watching her. And that's when I was like, oh, she hit a new level of something in this moment. And I was willing to let it roll until they said, we don't have any more on the chip. Um, but she she went there, and when she went there, like we we were all in video village, like oh, and so uh, I mean, props to Yvonne, but uh, yeah, I was just willing to let her be the most uncomfortable she could be to 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 activate or find that. Yeah, if that didn't work. I tried to find something else. That's it. That's what happens, right? I mean, but it it, yeah. it was so compelling. Uh, both Alexander and Yvonne. Alexander, great Aussie actor, by the way. Um, yeah. didn't even know he was Aussie until like episode three of season four. I'm like. This guy Aussie. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's a whole yeah, other yeah. thing, right? <laughs> Amazing cast. And like there's other great highlights from the season that you didn't necessarily direct, but of course you're the showrunner. So like low-key done. Issa is taken advantage of by all these people. It was so heartbreaking. And then by the end, she's she's crying. Um that's that's a really great um testament to Issa's ability to make great. us laugh and make us cry within one scene. Uh, isn't that amazing? Yeah, she's great. Yeah. Yeah. Like watching her, like just watching her, obviously I've been with her, you know, since the pilot and every season I'm just more, I remember I was really, when I realized I was like, it was my episode season one when Lawrence is breaking up with her and she's basically begging him not to go. Cause for the most part, season one, it was pretty comedic, comedic, comedic. And yeah. then that was like the real first heavy dramatic scene we had. And I was like, Oh man, like you're amazing. And then just watching, the finale of season two and you know obviously stuff in season three and this season to watch her with molly and obviously like that last scene in the finale with her and lawrence was just like i mean i just was like oh wow like you're i, I love working with isa every day it's such a i love it yeah uh, emmy voters pay attention um you know i you made some really interesting noise not long ago about writers and showrunners not pulling down their blackface episodes and inviting them to explain how they got there and why there weren't more people of colour in their rooms to stop it. Um, I've never seen that perspective before because we, we live in a cancel culture world right now and it's nice to be able to just have a bit of a different perspective, still say it's not right, but not necessarily have to just uh, um, delete them. I'd really love to hear more from you about this because I find it really fascinating. Yeah, I agree. I don't think we get anywhere with cancelling people. I feel like it's a very dismissive and a short way of not, I think we live in a world right now where people don't like to be uncomfortable. Um, and I think right now that's when you're uncomfortable, that's the only way, I mean, it's literally, called, it's literally called growing pains. I mean, it's not growing comfortably. I mean, that's kind of the point, right? We can't, it, it just takes us to be uncomfortable to have conversations. And if we just take it down, it, it almost makes it be like, oh, that's great. That's so kind of you. But it doesn't ask the initial question, which is like, well, how did we get here? And like, to, in the 2000s, this, I, I, that was my thing. I was like, I think it's absolving everybody of having a conversation. And I'm, I'm not, and, and I was hired by one of those showrunners. I worked on Scrubs under Bill Lawrence. And I was like, I know he's not that guy, but also how did we get here either? You know what I mean? Like, I know what it's like to be the only black writer in the room. And like, let's have a conversation about that and like why that's the case. And so I think in a world right now where we, where, where Twitter's are quick sound bites and quick jabs and quick this, it's like right now we need to have, um, we're in a world where we don't understand each other, more conversation, not less. 
And so to me, the idea that we would just dismiss things and just be like, oh, good, they took it down, thank God. I, it just goes like, no, we're missing a moment to like actually have a teaching moment and a conversation moment and not to vilify um, anybody, but to also say like, let's call this to the carpet and like, let's have a bigger conversation that like, it's okay to say that the machine's a little broken. Like, let's acknowledge that the Hollywood machine ha has some, some big broken parts and we need to fix those things. And so um, that, that was sort of my way to say, like, let's just not gloss past any of this. Yeah, let's learn something. And with, uh, without me trying to sound condescending or like a liberal uh, bleeding heart, like it's, it's nice to see other perspectives and kind of learn from our mistakes and things will, things will change. In 10 years, we'll look back now and think, oh God, I can't believe we were doing that now. We just... You don't know until you know later, I guess. It's not a very succinct way of putting it. But anyway, um, so the, the other thing I want to talk about about Insecure before we finish up, and I, I haven't really seen a lot about this because maybe it's not something that we people generally want to talk about, but sex is um, depicted on this show really honestly and explicitly. It features in a lot of the episodes. It may make people feel uncomfortable, but it's it's part of life. And I'm just wondering what your perspective is on never really pulling back from that. You seem to feature it quite substantially in the show. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think we have a show where there's 20-somethings and 30-somethings who are single dating and they have sex. <laughs> and uh, I think typically, though, I think on shows, I think with, with Black shows, and I, I, and I can't speak on, on every show of color, but I think on Black shows, sometimes the sex is to be shown in a very, like, primal in a very objectifying way where I feel like, you know, white shows, shows like Girls and shows like that, even Sex in the City, where you get to sort of examine sex and talk about sexuality in a way that's awkward or uncomfortable or beautiful and all these things, all these sort of range of, of, of emotions on, on this sort of palette. And I felt, and we feel sometimes like with black shows, like we never get to see the beauty in our sexuality and, and to be able to explore that. And so like, we're always trying to find ways to, to ex explore that, um, examine that, um, talk about the fun and the beauty of it, the, the love in it, the awkwardness in it. Because I think all of that, when you use the whole palette of that, it just becomes, you give, you give people humanity because you're basically saying it's all the same, right? W w whether you're Latino, like you're Asian, anything. It's like you get to see as opposed to objectifying of a thing. Um, and I think that's true whether you're talking about sex or like having to have a show where the black person is the coolest person in the room or the black person yeah. is a great dancer. You know, it's like, it's all about, you know, it's all about one dimensionalizing somebody, right? And giving them the, ob objectifying them in the way you want to see them as opposed to the way they are. And then, so I think for us, we're always trying to find the way that it's sexy and beautiful and loving and, and primal in a way that's beautiful though. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And all those things. So I think that's how we try to always, uh, you know, feature sex in our show for sure. Yeah, and that's that's one of the strengths of Insecure. It's beautiful to look at, beautiful to listen to, but it feels authentic to me. And that's um, that's just my perspective. But I think you're obviously doing something good because it's people are really loving it. Final question before I let you go is about Uncorked, which you just raised. Um, that dropped on Netflix in March, and it's got really good rating. I think it's on like ninety three percent of Rotten Tomatoes. That's nothing to sneeze at. Ah, um, okay. Anybody who, yeah, you should check that out. Anybody who loves wine would probably love this show, this movie. Sorry, Nisi Nash, Cotton B. Vance, Mamu Do, do um, Afi, and um, Kelly Jenner. And I've forgotten the name of the girlfriend. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, Sasha Compare. Yes, she's fantastic. Such a great cast. Um, Matt McGorry. Where did the idea come from to do a movie about a, a, a man who wants to become a sommelier but you know has this issue with his dad? Uh, I mean, the short version is kind of based on like myself and my father. I, I grew up in a furniture store business, uh, family run business for my grandfather. I didn't want to take it over. And uh, I wanted to be a writer and my dad and I had just issues as men. And uh, I wanted to set up, I feel like white, I feel like white movies get to always kind of do these sort of slice of life, like Lady yeah. Bird, you know, Good Will Hunting, um, Manchester by the Sea, these sort of slice of life you know, father, son, mother, daughter dynamics. And for people of color, we don't really get many like kind of regular kind of generic life on Tuesday, slice of, slice of life movies. Yeah. Um, certainly not with black men where the crux of their conflict isn't about the father being absent. Cause like my father was very present, sometimes too much. And uh, you know, I never get to just see, you know, black men on screen like that. And, and to do things that I think were typically viewed as white um, occupations and to be able to like, 
do that and, and see that felt like I wanted to see those th those same things in Goodwill Hunting and all those kinds of movies for us. And so to set it in a world that, again, you typically don't associate us to be in, but we clearly occupy uh, to me was just important. And so, uh, so yes, but I really just wanted to tell like a father son story that just had issues with them as men trying to figure out their relationship and their dynamics. So that's sort of where it came from. Yeah. And again, it's such a universal theme that, you know, most of us can probably relate to. Uh, everybody, I, I implore you to check it out. Check out Gold Derby, make your predictions, click subscribe, and don't forget to watch all of our great community chats. And Prentice, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.